Baruch Hashem Akiva was very active last night. Yeah, he sounded really good. Yeah, he did. It's very re- encouraging and reassuring to hear. Yeah. Okay, so Zok Tehela Gamar. Today is Daf Yudalad, and we're starting on Yudalad Olive, about 10 lines down from the very new Mishnah. Kol Shiva Shiyomim, all seven days, Huzayrek Es Adam, the Koin Godel, in the seven days that he's spending isolated in the Lishkas HaParedin, he is going to be doing this Rikas Adam from which carbon Rashi says shall to meet him. So he's going to be the coin that does the avoida for the carbon tomid. It might be rusty. He might not have done avoida because he doesn't have to do avoida if he doesn't want to. But during those seven days, we insist that he does the avoida so that he should be very expedient in doing the avoida. And his makter the ktoris, the the Gemara is soon going to focus on the order of the Avoida, because from the Mishnah, it seems to indicate that first the coin is marked or the Ketoris, and then afterwards he's Metevus and Neiris. The Gemara is going to question that order. Let's see what Rashi says of Metevus and Neiris. Mideshen min Efer Hapsilos Shekovu. The Neiris that were lit yesterday are today burnt out. They have the burnt wicks in there. So he cleans it out. So Medashin min Efer Apsila Shakabu. The Chain Kal Yoim Vyoim Metivim Baboiker. Every morning, this is what's done in the Beis Hamikdash. They clean out the Menorah. Shinemar Baboiker Baboiker the Hetiva Yasaneris. The Chal Yoim. Additionally, every day, Maktirin Katoris Behechal. There are Maktir Katoris in the Hechal on the Mizbech Apnimi twice a day. Pras B'Shachris one portion in the morning. Pras B'Nerabai. Which I assume once again is referring to is referring to the carbon tomin. and any other day of the year, he has the option to step in on any avoid being performed and telling the coin, I know you won this in the Goyrel, but I'll, I'll take over from here. He has the right to choose. Any avoid that he wants to do, and if there's a geshmaka uh, piece of meat that's being given to the coin from the carbon, he can go over to the coin and says, uh, "I'll take that." In as kol carbon any avoid that he wants to do, he can take over. And the Mishra can't say, hey, this is our week, this is our day. We want the Avoida. He has the right to step in and do any Avoida that he pleases. He comes first. He also has a right to take any Kachim that are being distributed to be eaten by the Kehanim, he can take. The best portion. He can take the best cut of meat. He's entitled to that. Zakta Gamar, Man Tana, who is the Tana of this Mishnah? Who says that even though this week the Kohen Gadol is getting spritzed with the water of the Paraduma, he's still considered Tahar and he's still allowed to do a Vaidah. Amr Abchista, Zak Abchista, the Loi Kiravakiva. This would not be consistent with the Shita of Rabakiva that we're about to illustrate. The I Rabakiva. If you want to claim that our Mishnah is consistent with Rabbi Kiva, Vargin. Ha'amar, Rabbi Kiva said, Tahar shenofla alav hazah kameisai. We know that when you spritz on someone who's tamay meis, if you spritz on him, the afer of the paraduma, that's matar him. But someone who's tar, that gets spritz from the paraduma, he becomes tamay. And of course, that's a, a wondrous idea, and we learned that from a Pasuk. So we know the Kayin Gadol every day of those seven days besides day four gets spritzed. How could he do a Vaida if he becomes Tommy the day that he got spritzed? Rashi says, They're spritzing on him. The Tanya, because we learned in a Brisa, which illustrates the Machloikis between Rabbi Kiva and the Rabbonim. 
When Daki Dal, we just finished the Mishnah. The Tanya, it says in the Pasuk, in the Parsha Paraduma, the he's a Hatar al Atame. The Tar person spritzes on the Tame person. And so it says as follows Al Atame Tahar. If the Tar spritzes on the Tame, he will make the Tame Tahar. But the Al Atahar Tame. But if he spritzes on the Tame, he will be ta- on the Tahar, he will become Tame, Divir Abakiva. So according to Abakiva, it's 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 impossible for the kind during the week that he's getting spritz on the May Paraduma for him to do the Avaida. Alatame Tar, Valatar Tame, Zuk Rashi. And he's Alatame. Who says he's uh who says he did any spritzing or was spritzed on those seven days? Because the we, we learned earlier in the Mesachta that the Kohen God will get spritzed all seven days except for day four. He gets spritzed by, by the Paraduma, the Afer from the Paraduma? Yes. Gets... Oh. We actually have a Machloik Shanoim if it's day three and day seven or if it's every day of the week because day one day one could be the third day since he became Tomei because maybe, maybe he became Tomei three days ago and day two huh? maybe he became Tomei two huh? days ago. So maybe, the but the only day he misses is, is Shabbos and day four. That's just in case he was Tame Mace. How correct? Okay, but just so, in case he wasn't, it'll make him Tame. Right. Okay. So Zuk Rashi Al Tame Thor Al Tar Tame Im Hiza Al Tame. If you spritz on someone who's Tame, which is the one who's supposed to get spritzed upon, Nasa Thor. But Im Hiza Al Thor. But if you spritz on someone who's Thor. Later on in the Gemara, the Gemara is going to drill down into understanding the source of the Machloikis between Rav Akiva and the Chachamim. And it's going to tell us, the Gemara is going to tell us that there's an extra word, Allah Tami. The Chachamim, this Pasuk is not telling you anything about that. The Gemara is going to actually say, the Chachamim have a Kabbal Chaymer. Madich, if he spritz on the Tami, he becomes Tar. If he spritz on the tar, for sure he should be tar. So the Chum say, this Pasuk is teaching us something else. It's telling us that it only be, it's only considered a haza if you spritz on something that's royal to get a haza, such as a human. It's teaching us a separate drasha, nothing to do with the idea that Rabbi Kiva wants to introduce. Rather, it teaches us the whole concept of haza only refers to if you spritz something that could be makabal tuma. If you spritz something that cannot become tummy, such as an animal, which cannot become tummy mace, if you spritz on the animal, it's not considered haza. If your action is considered haza, stay tuned. But something that's not makabal tuma, such as a behema, in Hazo Hanitezis Ale and Kri Hazo. If you spritzed on a behema, it wouldn't be considered a Hazo. Vinaf Kamina. So, what is the difference if it's considered a Hazo or not? Shashirayim, Shayesh Beezoid, Shiare, Sulunheim, Bein Lachshir Nahazis. The Allah is that you dip a, a bundle of grass into the Meparaduma, and with that, you spritz. Well, if you spritz on a person first, then that's considered Hazo. And therefore, if there's extra, if after you spritz, you still have some some water left in the bundle of grass, you can spritz somebody else. But if you spritz the behemoth first, you won't be able to spritz somebody else. And we're going to learn that right now. What happened if you wanted to spritz on a behemoth? You, you had your grass dipped into the May Paraduma, and you think you're going to spritz on the behemoth. And he's a lot of and there was a person there. You thought it was an animal, and it turned out to be a person. And after you spritz on that person, you still have more water still yet absorbed in the azoi. And now you found somebody who's actually tame, and you want to use this to spritz on him without dipping it in again. So miyesh beezoi, yes, If there's still water left in the azoi, let him use that to spritz. On a person, but if his intention was to spritz on a person, the he's a and he ended up spritzing on the behema, then in even if there's still water left in the days of 
lo yishana. He's not allowed to use the water. That water now becomes possible to spritz on a person. And Rashi explains, he did not if the first hazah was on the human, then if there's any extra water left, you can use that once again to spritz on the human. The loy nischaven. The choyzer v'shoyne v'tzerch laxer lahatva. Let's see the vav to should make a little bit of sense over here. Shetzerch hazah the heicha the loy nischaven loy. The choyzer v'shino. If you if you were nischaven for a human. And you now have extra, and you want to spritz on another human. You don't have to dip it in again to the water. The water in that azoid is kosher to spritz on the person. However, if you ended up spritzing on the animal, there you're not allowed to use the extra water in this azoid to spritz. The haza shall behema, and I'm going into the bach, I'm gliding into the bach. The haza shall behema, shehiza aleh, ain't haza. When you spritz on the behemoth, that doesn't it doesn't qualify to be called a hazah. And since you did an activity with this mechatos that was not hazah, the havalahu kemaim shenasis bahen malacha. We treat it like a water that a malacha was done with. And the water of a paraduma, if malacha is done with it, it's automatically possible. So since you first spritz on the behemoth, this water is now water that you did malacha with, which now becomes possible. For somebody, for somebody to use to make someone fall. And that's what you learn from Vahiza Tamay al Only if you spritz on something that's Tamay, that's Royal Kabul Tuma, such as a human, then, then it's considered Haza, and this water is still Royal to be Matar somebody else. But if you spritz on someone, on something, it's not Kabul Tuma, Behema cannot become Tamay. Then that water is considered to have been used for a Malacha, and you can no longer use any excess water. So in order to be able to spritz on somebody else, you'd have to dip it again into the mechatos that's still pristine, and then you can spritz it on another person. Zog to Gemara, my time with Rabbi Kiva. What is the Sfar of Rabbi Kiva that he learns that if you spritz on a tahar, it becomes tummy? Because he asks as follows, the Torah could have written, why does it say the Hizah HaTor Ala Tomei? My Allah Tomei, so let's look at the actual Lashna Pasuk. It gives us it always gives us clarity. It says the Hiza Hatar Al Atome Bayamishlishi Vyamishvi. What Phil said was the Hiza Hatar Alov. Because in the context of the Pasuk, we're referring to spritzing on the person that's Tome. So why does the Torah repeat Al Atome? My Al Atome. Shimami no, we see from here, Al Atome Tahar. If you spritz on the Tome, that Tome becomes Tahar. But the Alatar, if you spritz on somebody who's tar, Tomei will become Tomei. And therefore, the Kohen Gadol, who is a Suffolk Tomei only, so he might be tar, if you spritzed on him from the Meachatos, he would no longer he would no longer be able to do the Avodah that day. How is that a logical conclusion from that Tosuk? It says, Vehiza Atar Alatomei. So we learn. Yeah, well, it says an extra tummy. So now I, so from there, from there, I see that the tummy becomes tar and the tar becomes tummy. I, I don't see how Lord Bikiva sees that still. Because we see the only way water, this water has the properties to be matar, is if you spritz it on the tummy. So we make it eat. on the tummy. Masha Enkin, if you spritz it on the tar. Enkin, if you spritz it on the tar, it doesn't work or it doesn't do anything. Like, why, how do you see the opposite? Because it's just tummy. I, I hear your Shaila. I hear your Shaila. But that is the drasha that they made. Okay. You, know, you wouldn't need a Pasuk to teach us that it does nothing. Because someone who's tar doesn't need anything. So what message would okay. the Torah be telling us that it does nothing if he's tar? We know that without the Torah telling us anything. That's true. But that's that, that, that's true and well. But that's it, it's still pretty wild what Rabbi Akiva is actually saying, why people don't, why nobody understands it. I don't see how I, 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 David Zolti would agree with you because we've always struggled to understand with clarity how they understand how to make drushes. And that's why drushes is not a do it yourself yeah. project. Uh, you're right. You're I, right. Gun. I should have waited for him. I do agree with you, but I'm, I'm tired of asking these questions, to tell you the <laughs> truth. <laughs> we have to ask it every time because we have to bring to light every time that we are not capable of making our own drushes. 
because we don't always connect the dots as to how they got to A from B. How they made how they put two and two together from the Zika the Pasuk and come to their conclusion. I could suggest a hundred different conclusions that you could come to, but we have Kabbalah from Chazal. And Mechi has something very clever to say. I'm seeing Mechi's talking to you. I, I'm, I'm, that both ears wide open. I don't hear him though. We have a clearly in the construction that the person who curses, he has to wait for the brother. He becomes Tomei. We know already, that's clearly in Terry. That's a, we're under the there. We're going to the concept that if somebody is cursing the, 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 the person. So you already see a precedent that someone Torah becomes Tomei. In, 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 in this very same posture. In, 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 in this Indian of Paraduma, I hear. So, so we already have, a, we, the Torah is already teaching us how a little bit of Paraduma works. Yeah. That Torah people become Tomei. I hear that's a nice hour. It's a nice hour. You hear Chaim No. Can you repeat it? No, repeat it. Matthew's saying that you see in the in the Parsha Pardu, it says Beferish, that the person who touches the Mechatos and the person who spritzes the Mechatos becomes Tomei. So you already see uh, you already see that the way May Paraduma works is it's Metama Tahirin. So it's not so far fetched to argue that someone who spritz with it would also become Tomei. We don't need to draw. You see, off. it has properties of being Matama, somebody who's taught. Okay. The mission is very clear that the Torah is shown in the Shrissim or whatever, 37. According to the Kiva, that would not always be the case. According to the Kiva, you have to say only if it's a doctor and you have to be about it in order to. According to the Kiva, how would you say in the mission? He wouldn't do that either. Maybe you have a keeper holds, he doesn't do that right now. No, do the current model during the seven days of isolation does not do that right The mission says he doesn't avoid the shushik, be used to it. So he doesn't do that right No, but but the hazard. He gets hazard. And because of that, we because of that, he just suffered from it. And we don't let him do that right now. Uh, because that, and that, that comment is going for one day, really, right? That's right. Oh, so the Gemara is going to say later on a, a, a way around it, uh-huh. a very simple way around it. Uh-huh. The simple way around it, uh, the simple way around it is, uh, I might as well share it with you, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a secret. The simple way around, which the Gemara is going to answer at the end, is what type of Tumma does someone get from this Tumma if he gets spritz? He's Tumma to the end of the day, mm-hmm. right? So maybe he does the Avoida first and then they spritz on him. It doesn't say what time of the day they're going to spritz on him. Spritz on him after he did all the avoid. Very simple solution. Yeah. So the Gemara, the Gemara is going to bring it up. Dr. Rabbanon. Hi, this Allah Tomei teaches us the Dvarim HaMakabal and Tomei Hudas. Abel Hocha. But when it comes to being Metama somebody who got spritzed with the Parah Aduma water, Kavu Haimahu. Im Allah Tomei Tahar. If it makes someone that's Tomei Tahar, Allah Tahar like Hoshkin, surely someone who started off Tahar should surely be Tahar. Rabbi Kiva, and Rabbi Kiva says, you're right, it's counterintuitive. Logic would dictate otherwise. That's what Shloyme meant, referring to the parsha Paraduma, I thought I can figure out the Torah, but you know what? It's far from me. It's very, there's, there are many concepts in the Paraduma that are inexplicable, that, I, that are beyond me. Rabbanon? So if he can't figure it out, that we shouldn't feel so bad, Chaim Tzvi. <laughs> the Rabbanon yeah. and the Rabbanon who, who hold that this is not Allah, what was the perplexing component of Paraduma that Shloyma Melech was referring to when he said, I don't have a clue? So, the person who actually spritzes the Paraduma water and the person who becomes spritz from the Paraduma water, their tar. But when they get up ahead, someone who merely touches the water of the Paraduma is Tomei. Pray to Gemara. Umaza Tahar. The person. Now, how do you know that the person who spritzes it is Tahar? So Rashi says we learn it from a Pasuk. Umaza Tahar. The Darish Haki. We learn the Darish in the Pasuk this way. It says, Vehiza HaTahar. The Pasuk says, and the Tahar will spritz. And we Darish in Afla Achar Shehiza Karai Tahar. Even after he spritzes, we consider him Tahar. But the one who touches it is Tomei. Frank the Gemara, are you saying Umaza Tahar? Are you arguing that the person who spritzes the Mei Paraduma remains Tahar? But if it says in the Pasuk, Umaza Mei Hanida Yechabes Begodah. 
it says those words. One who spritzes the paraduma is not only tame, but he makes his begodim tame as well. So how could you say that it's tame? So Kamura, my maza nageya. When it says maza, it doesn't really mean maza. It means nageya. In fact, Kamura, vaksiv maza, vaksiv nageya. It actually specifically says both in the pasuk. Let's look at the pasuk. It says, it says as follows. This is black and white in the Torah. That that person who spritzes, the man he does and then it says So how can you argue that the mazay meyanida means nageya? The Torah has a special clause for nageya. So clearly maga is tame. How could you say it's not tame? Vaksiv nageya. The another question is mazay boy kibos. It's more than that. The Torah says that the Mazaman, he does even more Tommy than the Nageya, because he's Tommy and he's Metame, his begotten as well. Maza by Kibus begotten, Nageya loy by Kibus begotten. Ella, my Maza, what does Maza mean? No, you say it means the person who's carries, who carries the water. So it says Maza, and we are looking for any which way to say it doesn't literally mean what it says. Very, very perplexing. And Kaisus is going to address that in a second. But now the Gemara wants to argue that Maza means no, is someone who carried the man. In fact, if the Torah meant noise, why doesn't the Torah just come out and say what it means? Why does it why does the Torah express the word noise by saying the word maza? The, the, the someone who carries the mechatos, someone who touches the mechatos will not become tame unless they carried or they touched enough mechatos that you could spritz with it. Because there is a minimum shear required to spritz. According to some sheets. But the question is, once again, if it says Masa, why are we twisting and turning to say that it doesn't mean Masa? So I'm not sure if Tosis says it or if the Tosis of Yishanim says it. Oh, it's Tosis. Ma Masa Noisa. Frank Tosis. And we know that the Moral of Mecca Kromi Mashmuse. What's wrong with actually touching the Pasuk that it means what it says? Why are we being Oikir of Shat, Lamer the Masa Tahar, or Masa the Krahani Noisa? Amen, Masa Mamish. Just say it's Pasha Pshat. Rashi told us earlier that there's a drush that says so since you have another post that seems to indicate that the Maza is tar, then when the Torah says the Maza is tame, we have to say it's referring to something else because the Torah has already told us that the Maza is tar. I we learn from there. This is where the this is the big drasha that a tome, someone who's at full yoyim, could spritz to make paraduma. And this is the whole reason why we said that they be dafka mitamim lahoytim milibim shalthukim. You could learn two things from the he's at tar. A is that the maz is tar, and B is that he's at full yoyim. But I'll call upon him. The reason why we want to say that maz in the pasuk doesn't literally mean maz is because we do have a limud that the maz is going to be tar. So zok to gemara. Zok to Gemara, the reason why it uses the word Maza when it really means Naisei is to tell you that the only person who carries Mechatos that become Tomei are people that carried enough Mechatos that you could have spritzed it. Now the question is, is there a minimum shear of Mepar required? Your argument will hold water, no pun intended, if the Azar requires some minimum shear, and Rashi says it's a machlekes in Perak in the Mesechus Vachim, El Laman Damar Azar ain't shirich shear. If you hold that there is no minimum amount of water that you need, the tiniest bit of moisture will be mitar a person. Michael Amemar. Once again, there is no shear. So what? Why does the pasuk use the word Maza to express moisei? That's the more I feel Laman Damar Azar in Torah shear. Even if you hold that the minimum yeah. minimal amount of water could be mitar a person. Hanimile Gabba de Gabra. That means even if the tiny little, the tiniest little drop of moisture hit the person, the person is considered that he has been spritzed upon. Avabamana, but in the keli that you dip the grass into, everybody agrees, tri chashir, there has to be a little, a minimal amount of liquid in there. It's now we learn, kama yehei bahen how much water must be in the actual keli that you dip the grass into. Zog te b'raishev k'day sheyit Roshay 
Givoyim, the Yazar. Enough that you can dip in the tips of the grass. So there has to be something. Rashi's Kloimer, Kedei, Sheyit Vilaim, Bahen, Fila, Shehebel Hatis Nimena. It has to be deep enough that you could dip grass in. The grass will absorb some amount of moisture that you can then go spritz on the person. So, so it's that. So it's that minimum shear. So the reason why it says the word maza, even though it means noise, is because it wants to tell you that there has to be enough of the keli that you can dip into it properly. Abai Omar, the terrorist that I said earlier, what is the problem? Let it be good according to Kiva, and let us say that maza. That the that the Kohen Gadol who's tar becomes tome from getting the spritz since he was tar, but it's still not a problem. I feel him rebekiva. The over avoid the kula yoyma. Let him do avoida all day long. Ula panya and in the afternoon after he's finished doing the avoida, then ma do Allah, then they'll spritz on him, and then the tovel he'll tovel like Mechi mentioned. The avid as harav shemesh. will have harav shemesh, and next morning he's good to go again. So it's not a contradiction at all. Let him be tome. Let us hold that he does become tummy after he gets spritzed until the end of the day. He just won't get spritzed until he's already done the other idea. So we say every day in Karbonis, I don't have a sitter here, but we're going to need it. There's a sitter over there, a blue sitter on top. Let's keep it handy so, so we'll, 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 we'll see how, how the order, so the Gemara is going to refer to that soon. So the Gemara says, no, you, you take it, you take it. So it's not Alma, you see from here that Ketorius Beresha, from our Mishnah, you see that first they mark the Ketorius, the Hadar Neris, and only afterwards are they going to prepare the Neris. We're a mini, but we have a problem because the, there's a Brisha that says differently than our Mishnah here in Yuma. And it says as follows Misha Zacha Bedishin Mizbech Apnimi, the first pious every day, the first Goyro that was made to determine. Which coin is which avoida was the following list of avoidas. Misha Zacha Bedishna Mizbecha Pnimi, who will be Zoycha to do Disha Mizbecha Pnimi, who Misha Zacha Be Menoyer, and who's Zoycha to deal with the Menoyer, who Misha Zacha Be Ktoyers, and who's Zoycha to do the Ktoyers. So right off the bat, you see that first they deal with the Menoyer, and then they deal with the Ktoyers. Unlike our Mishnah that says first you deal with the Ktoyers, and then you deal with the Menoyer. Let's see Rashi quickly. Call Misha Zacha, Shalosh Mishnai is Hain Beseder Atomic. There's three Mishnais that deals with the order of how the carbon tomato is brought. So Dura Zuach Hazu, we say the Avaidosi. And the Mishnais, the Mishnais are listed one after the other, following the chronology of how the Avaid is done. Misha Zacha Le Pais, Vedishan Mizbech Apnimi, the person who is Zoycha in the Pais to do the Dishan of the Mizbech Apnimi, not unless he gets some other Avaidis that come packaged together with it. Ucha Shasim, say the Maisa Dishan, Nokat Basrei, Misha Zacha Bamanaira. Then it discusses who does a manure. Noit la satani, he takes the basket or whatever, whatever is required in the service of a manure. Mufarish maishat of snares, the choyzu vishayna, mishizacha bektaris, and mufarish al choyzu. Amakach sidran. So you clearly see that's the word of operation, not consistent with our mission. Amar Afuna, in fact, it's a machloik is, man tana tomid, who is the brice of tomid that says that the manure came before the ktaires, it's rab shimin isha mitzbahu. It's Abshim Nisha Mitzvah, and Abshim will argue in our Brisa. Zokhtar Ashi, Dishma in the Brisa, the Ayri, Behilcha Seder Atomid. We'll say that he's the author of that Brisa and Tomid, which in fact disagrees with our Mishnah Yuma. Frankly, more, but in fact, we learned not like that. We actually learned that Abshim Nisha Mitzvah disagrees with the Mishnah in Tomid. Zokhtar Ashi, we actually heard. That Reb Shimon is the one who argues. He's the dissenting opinion in the Mishnah over there. The Shemin lay the Polog Astami the Masechah Tomit. We're going to show you that he argues on the Stam Mishnai the Masechah Tomit. V'loy misuk misTamid the Tomit Kavasei. And for other reasons, the Mishnah in Tomit cannot be consistent with Reb Shimon. The Tnan we learned in Masechah Tomit. Baloy lekaren Mizrachas Tzufaynis. So Rashi tells us Baloy kain hazorik hasadam. The coin is spritzing the blood. He walks up the ramp and he comes to the north eastern Karen. He comes to the he comes to the north eastern Karen, which means if he goes up to Mizbech and he makes a right, he makes a right, he goes to the corner and he makes a left and he goes to the top. That's where the corner that's called the northeastern corner is. There in Noisin Matanari Shaina, Mizrachat 
he puts one matana on the corner that that's that that separates in the two directions. If you put it right on that corner, part of the dam is going to be on the east side of the mizbeach, and part of the dam is going to be on the north side of the mizbeach. Matanaras kamin geim yivanis. It's like it's 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 in the shape of an L-shaped bracket. It's an L shape. Um, and the blood will actually be visible on the east wall of the Mizbeach and on the north wall of the Mizbeach. So I'm going to go back into the Gemara. Then he comes around the Mizbeach until he comes to the southwestern point, which is the diagonally opposite point from the northeast. Then he comes to Marovas Dreymas, and the Braja says, Marova So let's read Rashi back to him. So oil to the stay matonish and arba. The carbon oil needs two matonish. We're talking about the tomit. It needs two matonish and arba, which means it's two matonish, but it actually becomes four. Because when you put it on the point of a wall, a point of a corner, it ends up treating two walls. So it's two matonish that really work out to four. Chain arba bishtay kronish zu kenega alachsonish osu. The two corners that they put the blood on are diagonally opposite from each other. Kedeshi yehem in adam be arba rucha isham isbeya. This way, the dam actually ends up being on all four walls of the mizbeach. The nearest Abba Matanis, it actually looks as if he put four dams on the mizbeach because you see one on each wall. Look, Hamema Fire, Shmaishna, Hani, Tartik, Kronis. Why Bedafka, the northeast and the southwest, maybe the opposite ones? So Rashi's telling us that Gemara is going to explain that. Zakta Gemara, Betani Allah, and on this Brisa, we learned that Abshimin Isha Mitzvah, Mishana, Betamit, he says it's different. And he says, Mizracha Tsefinus, Noisen Mizracha Tsefina. I agree with you that the process of the Mizracha Tsefinus is exactly the same. But in Maravis Deraimis, there it's not one matana that splits into two sides. But in Maravis Deraimis, he actually does two separate <coughs> applications of them. Noisen Marava, the Achach Noisen Deraimis. So you clearly see Rab Shimon is a dissenting opinion to the Tana in Tomit. So you can't say that Reb Shimon is the author of Talmud and, and argues on our mission. Zok Rashi, Reb Shimon is the author of Talmud and argues on our mission. Zok Rashi, the Matan Dam, he changes the process of the Matan Dam from the Tanakhama. The Matan Dam, Atomid, Mi Matan, the May Kol Shari Oilah. He says it's different than every other Oilah. Every other Oilah, he agrees that it's time Shein Arba, you put it on the northeast point, which splits onto two sides, and on the southwest point. However, by the Talmud, it's different. Losses from Menu Matan, Rishayna, Achas, Shish Time. I agree with the Tanakama about the northeastern one. That you just put it right at the point and it's spread to two sides. But but when you're at the southwest corner, there you treat each side of the corner independently. Two matanas that are two matanas, lafsika, you do them separately. First you put some dam on the west side of the Mizbeach, the Achach Droima, and then on the south side of the Mizbeach, Kiderach be also. He's walking around the Mizbeach in a counterclockwise motion. So he's first going to encounter the, east, the western wall of the Mizbeach, and only then will he encounter the southern wall of the Mizbeach. And that is the order in which he puts the dam on the Mizbeach. And when he reaches the point, meaning the southwestern point, he puts two separate matones. One on the east wall first, and then one on the south wall first. The time of Farish Kokame and on Dat Tezvav, which is tomorrow, we're going to learn the reason for this. So, Zok to Gemara, you cannot say anymore that Reb Shimon Isha Mitzvah is the Tana of the Brisa in in Tomit. El Amar B'Yechanon, Man Tana Seder Yuma. Who is the Tana of our Mishnah, Reb Shimon Isha Mitzvah? So, our Mishnah, in fact, argues on the Tana in Tomit, and Reb Shimon clearly. We we just saw we just saw clearly that Reb Shimon is not the Tana of the Brises in Talmud, but Reb Shimon could be our Tana of our Stam Mishnah here, who says in fact that first he is uh, mocked to the Torah, so then he's made to the Neiros, and the Brise in Talmud holds us the opposite. First he's made to the Neiros, and then he's mocked to the Torah. Perk the Gemara, the Rami say the Yuma say the Yuma. I'm going to ask you a steer Munei Bay in Masechah Yuma. We're going to have two different. Um, orders of how it's done. The Tanan we learned, Pais Hasheni, and this we will be um, encountering, this will be a Mishnah later on. Well, let's just see the Rashi first, before we get to the Stira. In our own Masechta, let's just see what Rashi comments. Um, 
man tana said yuma man tana la say the tomid the hak masakta the mairi be say the yuma kipurim the polag ah mishnais la say the tomid who is the tana of our mishnais that describes the say the avoida differently than the say the avoida as described in masakas tomid rab shimon isha mitzvah this is rab shimon isha mitzvah the shemin lay the polag is tamid and tomid because we happen to know that he argues he's the dissenting opinion on the Bryce and Tommy. So now we're up to a Kasha in Yuma Gufa, we have a steel. Because it says a Pais Hashemi. And Rashi tells us, the Pirkin de la Kamon, and that's what we're going to learn. I read Besader Arba Paisa Shahayu Shom Bechoyan. The mission is going to discuss the four different Goyrolois that were made every day to determine which coin is entitled to do which Avaida. The Katani, Basifas, Kibbutz, Pais Hashemi, when they were gathering the Kohanim to do the second Pais. In that second girl, there were 13 avoidus up for grab. So let's see what they were. Zakti Mishnah back in the Gemara. Mi Shaykhet, who's going to shecht? Mi Zorik, who's going to spritz? Mi Midash and Mizbech Apnimi, who's going to take the Deshan after Mizbech Apnimi? Or Mi Midash and Asamanoira, and who is Midash and Asamanoira, which is the Hatova Saneris? Or Mi Maila Evarim Lakavis, who's going to bring, bring the Evarim up to the ramp? And then Pais Shlishi, it's Chadoshim Lektoris by Uvefisu. A coin that never did Ktoris should come and get a chance to win this horse to bring the Ktoris. So clearly, this is saying that first they're made of Esaneros and then they take the Ktoris. This is a Numa. And what does our Mishnah say as well? Our Mishnah says you're marked to the Ktoris and then you're made of the So you have a steer of Inay Ubey in Yuma. Now you can no longer say that one's one town and one's another town. Because this is the same as Sechta, it's not, it's not Mustabar the Gemara feels to split them up. So we have a steer here, who is the Tana of Yuma. Let's see a little bit of information about these Gairalis. Look, Rashi, Mishach Lumi Zarek, Esdomai, Umi Midashin, Mizbech Apnimi, Umi Mala, Eivari, Tomid Lakeves, Visoyjun Oisnolov. First, he sets up the Eivari on the actual ramp. The Achakach, Mailan Misham Lumizbech, and then after they're all set up on the ramp, then he brings them up to the Mizbeach. Why, why is every little activity split up to have so many people involved? We should be right because it's a COVID for the Rebbeinu Shloylam if there's many people involved in doing these avoidance. Umayin avoidach shloy shashri, the Brisa, the Mishnah there, lists off 13 avoidance. Um Spartan, after they go through all 13 avoidance in the second goyro, they don't say, okay, now to the third goyro. Everyone disperses. So they don't just make the three girls one after the other. After each girl, they, they, they disperse and they make a separate announcement later on to make the next girl. Why would you do that? Isn't it much more expedient and efficient just to make all the girls one after the other? Why is it done this way, which seems to be inefficient, especially for Kaihan and Darsh reason? We want there to be a tumult. We want it to always be a tumult. So the kachin, the vase of the the half of a vismedish has to kach. It has to be busy. It can't be for shlopin. Now, the Taurus, the Mishnah tells us only chadashim look Taurus by Yom Yippur. If you've already been mocked the Taurus in your lifetime, don't come participate. Only people who never had a chance. What is so special about the Taurus? Only those Kayanim is to cool on the Khan Lagari Lak Tayas. Avaloy Shadim, not people who are already you shot them, not people who already had a chance. Why is that? Never was a Kayan granted the opportunity to mock the Kutaris twice in his lifetime. Why? It made you rich. So everybody wanted to do the Avaida. Shinemar Yasimu Kutari Bapecha. It says you see Torah followed by Uksiv Basrei Baruch Hashem Chelai, which is referring to Parnasa. What we need to extract from this series of Mishnayos is that the Hatavas Aneris came before Ktaris, which is not consistent with what our Mishnah says, and that the Ktaris came before the Hatavas Aneris. So that is the problem that we have now. Amar Abaye Loi Kasha. It's not Shver because the Hatavas Aneris was done in two stages. First, they were made of two neiris. They were mafsik, and then they came back later and they were made of 
the five nerves. So Khan Batavish Day Nerus. When the Bryce says that Atava Saneris was before the Ktairis, this last Mishnah that we just learned, that's referring to the Shtainaris, which was before the Ktairis. Khan Batavas Hamash Nairais. But our Mishnah that says that the Nairais was after the Ktairis, that's referring to the five Nairais. So it's not a contradiction at all. And what is in between the two Atavas, between the two Atavas, is the Haktaras Hakatairis. Zok to Gemara. I'm let's see Rashi. In the third parak of Yuma, we're going to learn. I'm reading on Shemavstik Batovas Aneris. It's a, when you do a Tovas Aneris, you split it up. You don't do the whole seven Aneris in one shot. Mishahetev Chomesh Toisek Umamtin Achenasas Avoida Acheres Ben Taim Bechoyzometer Stein. So it's exactly the opposite of what I said. I said you do two first and five second. It's better if I'm quiet and first learn Rashi and then say what you have to do. So Rashi said, before I'm dead wrong, that first they did five Nairis, then they took a break, they did some other avoid in between, which we're alleging there's the Kfaris at this point, and then you come back and do the two do the two Nairis. So in fact, our Bryson it says that you did, our Mishnah, in fact, it says that you do Kfaris first, is referring to the two Nairis, because it's the two Nairis that are done last. And we're going to learn that there's a Machloik between Abishol and Rabbonon, about which avoida is done in between the two atavis. One mandamar holds that the katoris is the avoida that's done in between, which is what seems to be indicated by our gemara here. The ikalamandamar, however, there's someone who holds the shkita as atomid, the zrikas domi mafsek. It's the shkita of the tomid and the zrikas dam of the tomid with which you're separating the atom of the five neiros from the atom of the second neiros. Again, later on in the Gemara, we're going to learn why the Atavas and Neris had to be done in two stages. Zok the Gemara, Zok Rashi, the Tanadi Don, our Tana holds, Svir Le Bektaris Mafsakli. Clearly, from our Mishnahis, you see that it's the Ktaris that comes in between the Atavas and Neris. Hilchach, Hadakatani, Ktaris Beresha. The Mishnah, our Mishnah, it says that Ktaris is done first. It's Batava Shtainer's Kamar. It's referring to the second round of Atava, which is Shtainer's. Vaditnan Beresha, Batava's Chamish Rishainer's Kamar. And the Mishnais that we just quoted that indicate that you do Atava Sadeir's before the Ktairis, that's talking about the five of them. Fractigamara, Fractigamara. Vabaye Misadir Marach Mishmade Gamara. Every day we read in Karbana Sabaya says the order of the Avaidas. Uvidama Tomid Mafsikl who so make you be so kind and read a brisa because clearly the Dama Tomid is what's in between the two Adovas, not Haktaris. So what does it say? <laughs> Oh, so right away you see that Abaye says that it's not the it's not the Ktaris that's mafsik, it's it's the Damatomit. So that's not consistent with our Mishnais. So Kumar Amri Loy Kasha, Ahil Abashol. What does the Braisha say? Abaye have a to say that Ali Abashol. Abishol actually argues with our Mishnais. We're going according to the Shita of the Rabbanon who hold that the Hefzik is with the Ketaris. The Tanya we learned, Lo yetev is haneirois, do not be made of the Neirois, be achakach yaktir, and then be makhtir the Ketaris. Ala yaktir the Ketaris for achakach yetev. Now what does this Brysa mean? So Rashi says, Lo yetev, Lo yetev, Loyetiv means shiv awesome. You shouldn't do all seven neiros. When it says loyetiv is neiros, makach yaktir means don't be made of all seven neiros and then be makach yaktiris. El yaktir beamza. You should you should do first five neiros, then make the yaktiris yaktiris. Ev achach yigbar hatavish time, and then you should do the last two. And this is what our gemara is saying is our sugya. Our sugya is going according to the rabbanon. Who says loyetiv is a neiros vachachiyakter el yakter vachachiyetiv, which is our shita 
that you, the Ptoris is what's mafzik between the Atavis Chomish Neres and the Atavis Tein Neres. But Abba Shol Oimer, Meitiv Ve'achakach Makdiv. Abba Shol says, no, you can be Meitiv, and then you can be Makdiv. Zot Rashi, Abba Shol Oimer, Meitiv Eskulam. You are Meitiv all the Neres before the Ptoris. So if the Ptoris is after everything, what avoid is used to separate it between the five and the two? And according to Abaye, in the name of Abishol, the Afsaka would be, according to Abishol, the Afsaka would be the Karmatomid. The Abishol, I'm made to Vachach Makir. My time with Abishol. What is far of Abishol? The Chsiv Baboiker Baboiker, the Tivas and Nairs. The Puzzle says Baboiker Baboiker by Tivas and Nairs. The Hado Yakti Rena. And only later on does it say Yakti Rena, which would indicate that the Haktaris Haktaris was after the Atova of all seven Nairs. Ravana on my cover, and how do the Ravana learn this? So tomorrow, my cover, one is tomorrow. The Edon Hatava at the time of the Tavas and Eros, the Hey Mark the Katoris, the Katoris should have already been brought already. So, not shot that you bring the Taurus afterwards, which is what, which is what uh, Abishol says. Rather, it should have had already been done because you're going to do the Taurus in between the two Atavas. Okay, let's stop here. And we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll be mamshuk tomorrow. Shkoyer, shkoyer. Because again, I